So let's talk about releasing the golf club and let's talk about why so many golfers are getting releasing wrong. And when they come to try and fix all well, the ideas of release, I think about the club moving from this side of my body out to this side of my body. And at some point in there, the face has to be managed. So somewhere towards where you want the ball to start. So how it goes from pointing at the camera back to where the target to then how it comes through the other side, the release. If that's not being managed, what golfers tend to see is they tend to see faults, like in still frames of cameras, which they start trying to fix. Where actually you need to be fixing the root cause, not the product of. Let's show you what I mean. So the way you release the golf club, the way you let it go down at the bottom or not, is gonna have such huge influences on the shapes that you see through your golf swing as you're filming yourself. So if you're somebody who films yourself and you see kind of chicken wing ideas, or you see clubs flipping forward, so people call it casting, where they chuck it out and then it gets forward, even with bent lead arms, those kind of ideas. And you're trying to fix those products of, for most golfers, what happens is they get really unstuck. It'd be like changing the cigarette brand that you smoke to fix the disease that the smoking's giving you you need to quit the smoking. You need to quit what is ever making this product happen. Now look, I've got two swings here, both world-class golfers. One's top 25 in the world, one's been on the European Tour for years. Soren and Ryan Fox here. And we're gonna see very different release patterns from both of these two golfers. And what happens with these two golfers is they're highly skilled. So Soren, who uses the face a little bit more, almost in what we would call a slightly open manner, he's very neutral at the top of his face, but even slightly open, so club point a bit more down to the ground, he manages his impact with this almost out and over rolling of the face as he comes through. Compared to Ryan, who's managing the face much more face up to the sky, what people would know as closed, is managing it much more, almost like a cricket shot, so hitting it this way. So two very different releases from two world-class golfers, but they're world-class, they're skilled athletes, they can manage their patterns. Just imagine if Soren was a stuck at 10 handicapper, getting up to the top of the backswing, face square to slightly open downswing, having this kind of release pattern where he has to almost hands up and out to, re to recover what he does with his wrist angles, and he suffers from shots off to the right or even over jaws because he over manages that. It's something that we might think about. He's a world-class player, so he doesn't need to. He can manage it. Ryan, if he hit massive snap hooks and blocks, seeing the positions he gets into, Lots of amateurs just can't release, they can't get that out. So if you're someone who does struggle with big curvatures and struggle with missing the planet a little bit, or you feel that your golf game's just leveling, you know, like you're stuck at 12 or six or 13 and you feel you're more skilled than that, often the release pattern is something that will hold those golfers back. So we're gonna to talk today much more about a neutral pattern of release to get the feeling of how you can work that into your game. So let's start with a basic idea of release. The most common picture you'll see on the way through is kind of this one. That's where you'll see, you know, your kind of textbook release. So club kind of going down feet line, toe end of the club somewhere near pointing up towards the sky on this parallel, body back with the ball. Where obviously lots of amateurs are seeing these kind of patterns or these kind of patterns. And they see these kind of patterns in pictures and they're thinking, oh, I'm just not achieving anywhere near that. So why is that? How can we get you getting into this more neutral um, released position. So the first thing you can do is try and understand what that position is. So lots of people think it's the face that's rolled over because you've got the hands crossing, those kind of ideas. So simplest way of doing that, I'm just gonna use this camera. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick the club up, point it out parallel to the ground in front of me, and it's on my feet line, but it's out in front of me in my lead hand. And I've got the toe end of the club pointing up to the sky. And then with my trail hand, I'm just gonna reach forward and take my neutral grip. Now from here, I'm gonna bring my head, right shoulder, hips back a little bit, stretch my body out, so arms out as body pulls back. So almost like I'm pulling the handle, the grip up and off the club to get this textbook position. So the first thing you wanna do is understand that position, put yourself in that position, because lots of people think it's this to do it, and that often gets people a little in a mess. So with that in mind, what we're trying to achieve, we're trying to get the club, like I say, starts here, backswing it's gonna go so the first parallel to this position and up and below your head, back down to somewhere around this position into impact, then on the way through, it's released. You see the back of it now. So it basically is in amongst the whole swing doing that along with other things. So how can we get you to do that and maybe not do that? Well, there's the first problem. How far forward are you pushing this of this? 
It's a great little release drill to get you going to kick this off, is I want you to take the club just with your trail hand, so right hand only, lead hand just off the club. Demo backswing, just half the way back, or if you can make a full turn, do. Now as you come down and hit your ball, but don't hit the ball, it's an imaginary shot, I'm gonna swing over my ball. As I get down to my um, hand and grip getting towards trail leg, my lead hand's gonna meet the club and just push the top end of the club back to let the bottom end of the club flick forwards. And what this will do is give you the feeling of that handle spinning about the middle of it a little bit more, which in turn will give you that feeling that you're seeing on the telly that position. Lots of golfers who are coming through are just dragging that handle down and through this way, giving them these horrible curvatures off to the right. So doing a few things where you get the feeling of almost slowing this end up to let that bottom end come through with your lead hand as your trail hand throws forward, you'll be amazed what that might do to how your release looks and the kind of shape of shots you hit. So like with any drill, trying to bleed it into a shot is the important part. So I'm gonna go here, lead hand goes back, just to meet the club as the club flicks forward. And then I'm gonna take my grip and try and bleed that into a shot as early as I can. So not hover over the ball for ages because I want to recreate that feeling of the handle. Whereas basically when it gets down towards trail leg, it's at its lowest point from here. It needs to be coming up and back as this bit overtakes. This is a great way of feeling that release. Next time you're at the range and you're warming up, a few of these, just knock the top end of the club back and then work that into a shot. I'll be amazed, like this works for so many students, if that doesn't transform the direction the ball flies through the air. Next idea, let's manage face angles. So a really simple drill for you to use. On the downswing, last parallel, as you come in to hit the ball, I want you to hit some shots with the face pointing more down at the ground. So you don't even have to swing for this idea, just set yourself up. I'm gonna put myself into last parallel. I'm gonna make sure the handle feels like it's quite low. So I wanna feel like it's down, so I'm really getting into the ground here. And what I'm gonna do is just chip this ball forward by pulling this handle basically up and back around myself to try and let the bottom bit fling out. It's just a little chip shot forward. You're gonna hit a few duffs at the start. You can see how straight that goes. So basically I'm using spinning the club almost about the middle of the grip out and down into that ball, which again will give you a much better release pattern, much more neutral release pattern, hopefully to help you manage your ideas that you're seeing on your follow throughs. So again, just gonna point the club slightly down at the ground, low with my handle, pick it up and go around. So face just slightly down to the ground, handle down, up and around myself. And the more you point that club down to the ground, see how that one's starting to go left now? Well, think about that. If that ball's starting to go left, I can manage that. I could manage it by turning it less down to the ground, or I could aim more to the right, deliver a little bit more handle lean, try and get my pressures a little bit more across to get that path now just moving a little bit to the right. And we got the start now of a draw pattern. So again, face down to the ground a little, just as that's up toe up to the sky, just slightly turning it down. Handle a little bit low, just really stretching out lead arm. I'm just gonna pull up and round. There you go, started that more out to the right. See how it's now shaping back. That's my slight draw release pattern. And it's coming from that little kink in the wrist angle, turning the face down the ground, and again, managing lower half to upper half, spinning it out to that ball. So you can notice at the moment, that last drill, we had a little bit of turning around this axis of the shaft. So it was a little bit of this, presetting the drill. But we talked a lot about this end in relationship to this end. And that's really key for so many golfers to managing that face because what they're doing generally is pushing that handle really high and then they might be pushing it back, letting that club go forwards or they're pushing it high and way forwards as well. And then we see the really rolly releases. So getting that bottom hand to feel like it lines up with the top hand. And what I mean by line up, I don't mean it has to be straight. So with an iron where you set it with a little bit of handle lean, you wanna be getting back to those handle leans and in theory, it'll be a slightly more exaggerated, but you're returning to a similar spot. What you're not doing is returning to a casted chicken wing kind of horrible flippy action. Now with all these ideas, always good to make sure you give yourself a grip change because other things that can really affect how you deliver it. Ryan Fox is a good example of that very strong grip and that's how his swing patterns match up. These ideas are built around some kind of standard hold. Two to three knuckles, lead hand, trail hand, just grip 
right side of the center. So this thumb and first finger goes up somewhere towards this V here, goes towards trail shoulder, those kind of ideas. If you've got extreme holds, then you will have to manage, like we saw from Ryan, strong grip, face up to the sky, you're gonna have to see some different patterns. So these are much more built around some more basic kind of standard fundamentals. And the idea, like I said at the start, like, it's great. Ryan's a skilled golfer, athlete. I saw him play tennis when I filmed with him before, and he could just bang the serve. Like, he was an all-round athlete. I'm sure he was pretty good at rugby and other sports as well. Um, he's managing a skilled movement. For lots of golfers that I see, they're trying to manage those movements and failing. So they're doing his strong grip, and where he gets neutral ball flights out of it, they're getting what you would expect, massive curvatures to left and right, believe it or not. It's very common with strong grips. You just generally get huge curvatures unless they're skilled. So the more neutral you can be in your setup, certainly in your hold, the more these kind of drills will make sense. Otherwise, you aren't going to be able to see the releases that we, you know, that you want, you are basically managing. And that's the point. That's where I said at the start, these ideas are the product of what basically is going on with this, how you manage that face or not. So the last thing I like to see with releases, which is the most common feeling, is I don't like to see people trying to roll the club over. I don't want to see people hitting massive rolly kind of swings, which is the most common idea when it comes to trying to control the release, certainly for people who cut it. The more you're trying to roll it over, so around this axis, what tends to happen for golfers if they manage to do it is they just start really losing loads of loft. So you give them a driver and it just doesn't work because they haven't got loft to play with. So they've got loft, say, on my eight iron, and I'm rolling that over to try and get some release patterns. They do it with the driver and it simply doesn't function. They hit low heely cuts or they hit these smother hooks to the left. So trying to get the idea of the bottom end of the grip aligning more in a functional way with the middle to top end of the grip is such a powerful way for golfers to get their releases working. And the last one, it's really basic, really easy, split hand drill. So trail uh, hand is gonna come down on the metal, lead hand up at the top of the grip. And again, it's about slowing that top half of the grip up. So what I want you to do as you come down is feel like lead hands pulling up and around your body as you throw that trail hand out. And again, you start seeing those nice textbook release patterns. A few of those before you hit the shot. If you need to on these, feeling like you're just turning that head down to the ground, that's coming from a very simple idea of trying to just take a little bit of this out. So basically your lead hand uh, is extended or in flexion or straight. So you're just trying to take this angle out a little bit, which in turn, so this angle coming out is what's just gonna manage that face in that slightly closed to par fashion, which will hopefully get these better impacts. So split hand drill, you can just turn, I got a Golf Pride logo here slightly away from my face, uh, face just slightly down to the ground, and then feeling like that bottom hand overtakes that lead hand, and I'm just doing them over the golf ball, and again, you can just bleed that in to a shot. And for most golfers, again, what happens is they say things like, oh, I've been swinging like around here and trying to flip it and not getting any results, where you get them to start thinking about bottom end of the grip, top end of the grip with a little bit of face control and it blows their heads off because they think, oh, that's just so simple. Why have I been trying to brutalize it so much? And that's something you see, you know, you see boxes down on the ground, people trying to swing it around their ankles and flip it in the club. It's just not necessary. Let me know in the comments down below if this makes sense or not. I'll do another one if it doesn't. Let me know what makes sense and what doesn't. And let me know if you practice any of uh, these ideas, how much it helps, what did it do, what shots did it create. The more you can get your release pattern for lots of golfers, just looking that little bit more neutral. More chance you've got some neutral ball flights. Better shots, and what might happen is your better shots, say with an eight iron, or bleed onto a hybrid, and then bleed onto a driver, and hopefully spread through all your game. Get those release patterns working for you. Stop working on the products, work on the causes, and your golf's gonna get better. Thanks for watching.